Greetings, everybody. So, uh, in the previous video, we explained the bifurcation diagram, uh, what it denotes, and we gave some instructions on how to plot it. So here we're gonna go uh, over the code of the bifurcation diagram. So you will find in the description of the video, both the link to the original video explaining the bifurcation diagram, as well as a link to MATLAB codes uh, that you can run yourself. So uh, what do we need for the bifurcation diagram? Okay, let's uh, make the text a bit bigger. Uh, initially, what we need, actually there are two files, okay. Uh, one is the file defining the system, and the other file is the uh, code for running the bifurcation diagram, okay. So the original uh, file for running the system is a classic file used for ODEs, okay, for all the Sarah the Pedro 45, for example, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, it has this very simple structure. It's actually a function. So it's called function dx equals Lorenz uh, over time and x, which is the state. So here in this file, I define three global parameters, sigma, rho, and beta. I define them as global because I need to run them inside the for loop and give whatever values I want. Okay. And here, of course, I have dx, which is actually the differential equation, three states. And here I define the first differential equation, a changed line. I have the second differential equation, and then I have the third differential equation. So this is extremely standard uh, in the way of defining differential equations in MATLAB. If you're not familiar with it, I would advise you to Google simply uh, OD45 in MATLAB, and you will find plenty of examples uh, on similar systems. I think it has a Duffing oscillator and some other systems that will uh, give you a clear understanding of how we define uh, differential equations. So this is uh, the file, I save it. Of course, uh, I saved with the same name as the function name, so Lorenz, and I put it in the same folder as my main file. Okay, so let's go over the code for the bifurcation diagram. Okay, I start by clearing out all the variables and also clearing out global variables. Okay, then I set uh, my three global variables here. So both this file, the Lorenz file, and the main file need to have this line of global uh, definition. Okay, so then I define the value for sigma equals 10. I define the value for rho equals 28. I choose a simulation step. Okay, uh, this is up to you. If you want a very detailed diagram and a very detailed simulation for OD45, you are gonna choose DT equals 0 0.001. Okay, you can go 001, but this is more detailed, okay? Then I set my initial conditions of the system, X0 equals 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, this is my choice. <clears throat> then I set my step interval. This step interval is actually the parameter uh, of interest for my bifurcation parameter. Okay, I'm going to run a bifurcation diagram, as you see here, with respect to beta. And I choose beta going from 0 0.2 up to 1. And of course, <clears throat> the more detailed uh, you want the diagram, the smaller the step that you're going to choose, Okay, the iteration step. I choose 0 0.001, which gives me, as you see right here, a pretty detailed diagram. Okay, Even if I uh, zoom out, it becomes a little less detailed, of course, but let's keep it smaller, uh, which gives us uh, a better detail. Now, I'm going to define a sort of a dummy matrix. This matrix has uh, not a number values, so it doesn't have values actually, but I predefine it. So here I'm going to save the intersections with a plane of interest, okay, the Poincaré cut. So I initialize this matrix. It has a specific amount of rows. I choose a thousand. You can choose more, doesn't matter, but don't choose too little uh, because then if it fills the matrix, it will append additional uh, rows with zeros. So make it big. And then of course, the number of columns has to do with the size of the bifurcation interval. So I choose it uh, equal to the length of step interval right here. Okay. so. After I choose all of that, I'm almost finished. I only uh, need to choose my ODE options. You can let the default options, of course, but here I choose ODE with relative and absolute tolerance up to the 10 to the minus five, okay? This gives a little better, uh, more detailed solution to the uh, system differential equations. But this is optional, of course. Now, after we perform all of these initializations, we go into the hardware part of the loop, which is okay. this big for loop that computes the bifurcation diagram. 
So I choose beta, which is the parameter under study, equal to the step interval. Okay. So this is the interval of choice, 0 0.2 up to 1. And then I have this dummy variable that I initialize to 0. Okay. And simply using that uh, to save the values uh, in my matrix. So I started from 0, and in each iteration, I increase the value by 1. Okay. Then I have this optional command. I explained it uh, in the video as well. Some papers, uh, what do they do? After each simulation, they choose the initial condition x0 equal to the, to the final uh, value of the time series from the previous simulation. Okay. Some other papers don't do that. Okay. Uh, so some papers you will see that the bifurcation diagram originally doesn't have this step. And when you add this step, it is called a continuation diagram. Uh, but this is not universal. You may find some difference from paper to paper or from book to book. Here I have commented this out. So most people will call this a bifurcation diagram. Okay. Although you might call this a continuation as well. Okay. So this is your choice. You can comment this out or add uh, or remove this comment uh, to have this is the for loop reinitialize the initial conditions after each iteration. So we have a value of beta. We uh, increased our dummy variable. And then we simulate the system for a considerable time. Okay. If you want a fully detailed diagram, you need to discard a little bit more. But for this case, a thousand seconds is enough. So I simulate with using OD45, the Lorentz system, for 1000 seconds from this initial condition and from the given uh, ODE parameters. Right. Let's zoom out a bit. I'm sorry. Okay. After I do that, Remember that uh, we obtain the series of the system, the series solution of the system, the time series, and we need to discard the transient. So the amount of time that you will simulate the system, and the transient that you will discard is up to you. It has to do with the system. It's not a fixed value. Okay, here I simulate for one thousand seconds. Some systems require more time, and I discard four hundred seconds of the transient to have a very clear and beautiful diagram. Okay. So I discard the transient. I choose an index, which uh, is actually a binary variable. Uh, it gives us zeros and ones depending on whether uh, the time variable here, the time vector is uh, larger or smaller than uh, 400. And then I save the time series into a new uh, into a new variable x capital, which only keeps uh, the transient, not uh, transient, I'm sorry, the steady state behavior. So it's x small of this index. Okay. So this x capital um, is a variable that only has the steady state behavior of the system without the transient. Okay. So now, after I have saved this variable, I'm going to start finding okay, intersections with a plane of interest. I also measure its length. Okay. So then I begin with a secondary for loop. And in this for loop, I'm going to find intersections with a given plane. And I'm doing it with the simplest uh, way possible. OK, you can actually perform it in a much better way if you like. So I have a second dummy variable here. And then I have a for loop that measures uh, from 2 up to the length of the whole sequence. And in each iteration, what do I check? I check this condition. Now remember, we are trying to find intersections with a plane of interest. And the plane of interest, you will see it in the video, is x1 equals 0. OK, so we're trying to find intersections where the first variable, x1, becomes 0. And we are also choosing a negative derivative. A negative derivative means that it will cross the plane x1 equals 0, going from positive values to negative values. OK, so this condition right here for each value of the time series, for each position in the time series, checks whether we have on the position, we have the second uh, index is 1. So we are checking the first variable of this uh, x, which is a state. So for the first variable, I'm checking in its uh, position of the time series whether the i minus 1 value is positive. And the i value is negative. What does this mean? This means that the x1 state is now negative, but in the previous iteration was positive. What does it say? This condition, of course, it says that we are crossing this plane 
x equals 0 from the positive value to the negative value. Okay, so we are crossing this plane for a negative derivative, right? So in case we are actually having this condition satisfied, so in case we're crossing this plane, then we have an intersection with the plane. So I'm saving either x2 or x3. So here I chose uh, the value x3. So I save this value x3 to this uh, matrix that I initialized M. So I'm saving this here. And then I increase, I increase my indexing. Okay. So I'm running this for loop to find all the possible intersections with the plane. And once I find them, I save them in this matrix. Okay. So I have the, the loop uh, closes and I have crossed all this uh, time series X capital. I exit this loop and then I exit the bigger loop. Then beta takes its next value. And again, it simulates the system from the same initial conditions, finds the intersections, save them, saves them on the matrix. Then beta increases again, simulates the system, discards the transient, finds intersection, and so on and so on for all the interval uh, of interest. And after this uh, big for loop closes, we simply plot this uh, matrix M, which remember this matrix M includes uh, as a saved uh, points, all the intersections with a given plane for all the possible values of the parameter beta. So we plot this result as dots, and I choose marker size of size 2 to have it pretty, and then the rest of the commands are simply uh, used to make the uh, diagram very beautifully. And this is the result. Okay. Uh, if I were to reinitialize the initial conditions after each iteration, so if, uh, if I were to comment this line out, we would have a slightly different diagram. And of course, the, uh, this happens because this system has coexisting attractors. But we are going to discuss about this in the next video. And of course, if you zoom in, uh, you can see more details like the period doubling group to chaos. Uh, but of course, in order to see that, uh, you need to choose a much, much smaller step so that you can have a very detailed diagram, OK, detailed. Uh, maybe if I make it smaller here it's more pretty but you know in order to do a detailed diagram here you need to uh, choose a much smaller step in this uh, step interval variable so this is the code for plotting the bifurcation diagram it's going to be available in the description okay so i'll see you all uh, in the next video